Hi, I'm My3D Jack, and in this training product, I'm going to go ahead and take you to 3ds Max 2010 and Mental Ray. Now, Mental Ray has seen a few upgrades and changes in the latest version of 3ds Max 2010, and we're going to be going over all that stuff during this training product. We have a lot to cover, so let's just go ahead and get started. Now, the first thing you notice here in Max 2010 is that by default, the interface color is actually dark. It's not the default light gray that it used to be in the past. This could be a good thing or a bad thing. Now, I myself, uh, personally, I kind of like this color. It's pretty nice, pretty easy on the eyes, especially when working with 3ds Max for long periods of time, for several hours in a day. However, for purposes of this tutorial, I find that, that this interface is actually going to be a bit too dark and sometimes it might be a little bit difficult to see what I'm doing depending on the menu. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a little change here to the interface. You can go ahead and do this if you'd like. Uh, you don't have to, but if you want to, you could. Maybe you'll go ahead and, and enjoy this a little bit better. What I'm going to do is go up here to the main menu, way up here. I'm going to go to the customized main menu item here and I'm going to go down to custom UI and default switcher. I'm going to open that up. That's going to open up a window here. What I want to do is make sure that in the left box over here I have Mac selected. And on the right over here you'll see different UI schemes or user interface schemes. Now the default is the one that we're using right now. You can see a preview image down here which is the dark interface. What I want to do is go down here to where it says AME dark and AME light. We can actually choose the AME light. And it's basically the same thing as the dark with the exception of the color. It changes to the light color, which is uh, the way that the default Max used to be before version 2010. So I'll select that light and hit set. It goes ahead and changes the interface for me. Hit OK here. And there we go. The interface is a little bit brighter. Now, it didn't make the change completely. I have to turn off uh, close Max and then open it back up again in order for everything to completely change to the light color okay so we're not going to worry about that at the moment but as you can see now it's a little bit easier to see maybe in the video uh, the contrast of the light menu items with the uh, dark text might be a little bit easier to see and pick up on the video so I'm gonna go ahead and use this light interface for the duration of the tutorial you don't have to switch to it but again if uh, if it helps you out go ahead and do that Alright, the next thing I'm going to do is load up the project folder that comes with this tutorial. With the purchase of this training product, you also get the project folder that's included with this tutorial, which you're going to need to be able to follow along with me here and get the most out of the training product. In order to load up the project folder, we'll come up here to this new toolbar that's up here where you can quickly save and open up files and create new scenes and such. We're going to go over here to this button that says Project Folder. We'll click on that. And it'll open up a browse window here. And in the browser window, you can go ahead and load up the project folder. The project folder itself is called i3D Tutorials Intro Mental Ray 3DS Max 2010. And the project folder again comes with the training product when you purchase it, when you download it. So just go ahead and look in your files and you should find it there. And then you can just load it up. So select the project folder and then simply hit OK. Once we do that, it appears that nothing happened, but the project folder was loaded up. If you were to hit Control and O on a keyboard to open up the file browser here, you're going to see several scenes here. These scenes are uh, pertain to the project folder, and we're going to be using these scenes to work on this training product. Okay, now with that, uh, with the project folder set up, the next thing to do is to load up Mental Ray. Mental Ray is not the default renderer of 3ds Max. So we have to load it up as a plugin because that's what it is. It's a plugin. Now it's very well integrated with 3ds Max, but it's still a plugin by nature. So how do we load it up? Well, if we go to the rendering main menu item, you can go ahead and rend open up the render setup window. And you can see the shortcut here is F10. I recommend just looking at those shortcuts and trying your best to memorize them and use them early on if you're new to 3ds Max. Okay. Now once we open that, let's go ahead and just right click anywhere here on the uh, on any open area here of the render setup window. So I'll just right click right here and you'll see this button that says close all. Go ahead and hit that to close all these rollouts. What you can see here is that this uh, render setup window, just like all other windows and parameter uh, windows here inside of 3ds Max have these rollouts which we can expand and collapse. What I want to do is go down here to the assign renderer rollout, expand that. 
and you see that the production renderer is set up to be the default scanline renderer and that's the default option what we want to do is change that so we'll click on this choose renderer button and two different renderers open up the view file renderer and the mental ray renderer of course we want to choose mental ray so we'll select it and hit OK now it appears that nothing happened but you could see here that under production mental ray renderer is now selected that's exactly what we want now if we were to go to the renderer tab over here we can see we have different rollouts and these pertain specifically to mental ray so we have different mental ray rollouts here now there's a whole bunch of them here to go over and tons and tons of options don't worry about it we have plenty of time to go over all that stuff later we're not going to go over all of it right now we can't so what I'm going to do is go ahead and leave it like that now if you want mental ray to be the default renderer every time you open up max we'll go back to the rendering menu open up the render setup window again F10 is a shortcut and what we can do is go to the common tab let's collapse all of this stuff go to assign renderer and you see down here there's a button that says save as defaults you can use that button to save mental ray as the default renderer that way when you use max from now on uh, mental ray will be loaded up as the default renderer so you don't have to be switching all the time okay so that's very helpful to use okay so I'm just gonna stop this video here in the next video we're gonna go ahead and open up our first example scene and we're gonna get started here and rolling with mental ray